hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the saturday show my name is tracy for those who are watching for the first time um before i head into the show as usual um i invite you all to subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed um like this video share this video and please comment um I would appreciate any support on Patreon. I have a Patreon. I'm trying to get more subscribers. I have five now. I would love to see that number at 10. Um, the descriptions of everything I'm talking about or the links are in the description section. Um, and before I get started, I want to, first of all, thank all the 100 people that have subscribed to my channel. It means a lot that there are a hundred people, well, 99 because I've subscribed to my own channel, but there are 99 people who believe in the mission of this channel. Thank you for your support. We're on now to 150, which means we're 50 away from 150. And so I'm still going to be pushing um, subscribers because subscribing is free it literally costs you nothing you will get notifications when i do new videos um and that's pretty much it in terms of the advertisement i um do want to remind everyone um that i will be doing a new year's eve show december 31st 2022 it starts at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I'll just talk about what 2022 was, kind of like the highlights, the lowlights, what I learned, um, what I'm looking forward to in 2023. Um, and that's just about it for all. I said that's about it, and then I added something, but that's all the promotional items that I have except for one, and I'll kind of save that towards the end. So there's not a lot of political news to talk about um today um there just isn't much to go on except for the final january 6th commission um hearing is going to be coming up next week or the week after i forget what day it is um personally i know some people say these hearings are important but I feel like we know, or I know, who's responsible for January 6th. You don't have to be Nancy Drew or Jessica Fletcher or the Scooby-Doo gang to figure out who's responsible. Why not just charge Trump? I mean, what, what, what proof do you need? He literally said, hey, I'm going to go down there with you in March. I mean... What else do you need? Him on videotape? I, I, I don't know how many millions of dollars, and I'm pretty sure this costs millions of dollars to put on, that this could have been spent somewhere else or give the Department of Justice that money and let them investigate. But no, we had to have these um, performative hearings, blah, blah, blah. They were a waste of my time. I don't especially when I know the facts. Now, of course, somebody's going to say, well, everybody doesn't know the facts. Well, they should pay more attention. Um, they were literally right there. Um, you have the proof you need. You have the testimony of the people who you could have took in private. You could have took private statements and said, here's our proof. Holding these means, again, it was more performative. For me, so I'm glad that these are finally going to um, be over with. Here comes the bad part. Look for more performative hearings in 2023 now that the Republicans are running the House. Um, it's, oh my gosh, they've already said they're going to do a hearing on the um, Hunter Biden issue. And somebody's got to explain that to me because the whole laptop thing completely confuses me are they saying that joe biden 
has something to do with the I don't understand the laptop story. So if somebody could just like in the comment section, please explain to me the whole Hunter Biden laptop issue. Do they have the laptop? Did he delete stuff off of it? I mean, what what are they talking about? I mean, we know everybody knows Hunter Biden suffers from substance abuse issues. That's obvious. Are they saying I, I don't know how those two things connect. If those two things connect, I just don't know. I don't know enough about what they're saying that's on the laptop. And if somebody has it or the drive, why not just expose it so we all know? Or maybe it's, does he have like secrets on this laptop? Does he have like military meetings or something? I know he was appointed to a board where basically he made a lot of money for no worth. Okay, if you want to investigate that, that's perfectly fine, but you might want to investigate um, Jim Jordan um, for his ignoring um, allegations of um, molestation when he was with the Ohio State. Um, but these things never, they never, um, they never are for the will of the people, or for the good of the people, they're performative. All this performative politics, and we have so many issues. We have homeless vets, hunger, food deserts, poverty, rising housing costs, higher interest rates. And we're focusing on hearing that, what are they gonna really produce? Yes, it's important to make people accountable, and I'm all for that. But when are we going to focus on the things that actually face our nation and get to work? I, I just wish that, and I know I'm never going to get that, but I wish the parties would do that. Um, they won't. But it's just like we're wasting time. We are wasting time. There are, again, millions of children that go hungry every single day. And it's like our Congress doesn't even care. They just they rather do all of these, and I hate to keep using the word performative, but they rather do all those performative things than what they were actually meant to do, which is to help solve problems. Um, but again, you have to sometimes hold the electorate responsible for these people being in Congress. They don't get to Congress by themselves. Somebody elects them. Somebody says, okay, this person is pro-Nazi. Let me put them in office. This person says, you know, another person says, you know, they're liberal. They're uh, neoliberal. They won't do anything. They'll say all these platitudes. They won't do anything, but it's better than voting for the conservative. They'll take everything away, put them in office, same thing. Both parties do this exact same thing, which is why I've always said, um, you know, people say, well, no, they're not alike. They're different. I don't see it. I literally do not see it. I see them as two sides of the same coin. One side wants to take away everything. And then the other side says they don't want things taken away, but they don't stop the other side from taking it away. So to be there, they're both, you know, it's, again, they're the same they're the two sides of the same form. Um, but again, you know, you'll always have people like, well, the Republicans, they want to destroy you. And, and what, the Democrats are better? They literally, um, when the child tax credit went away, which, you know, this is going to be permanent. It's going to stay. No. Nope. And who voted to make that tax credit go away? A Democrat. No criticism. Well, you know, Bernie criticized and some progressives criticized. But there was no punishment for him doing that. He kept like, all his committee's assignments. Um, you know, I, I, I think that we need some LBJs in the Senate and in the presidents and even in the, in the House. We need a politician that's going to say, you know what? I don't care about what, what letter is behind your name. You don't vote this way. 
there are going to be consequences. I won't support you on this bill if you don't support me on that one. And I think that's what, you know, say what you will about LBJ, but that's how he got things done. He used the bully pulpit to his advantage. He got Medicare passed. He got the um, Civil Rights Bill passed or Voting Rights Act. I forget which one. But he used that pulpit to get things done. And I wish we could get a president like that. But because, again, everything's performative. And let, me, let me say this so I can look well to the American people. It, it's, it's difficult. Um, and, of course, you have to believe what it is that you say you advocate for. I don't think that the Biden administration was ever for the tax credits. I don't. There was no, there was no fight back. There was no pushback. There was no press conferences with it, with it away. There was no criticism. It, it just wasn't. Um, and that's, that's just, that's just a fact. I mean, look at it. $15 minimum wage. We're going to keep fighting for it. Really? I haven't seen a fight. Maybe there's a fight going on behind with negotiations. Maybe. I'm not seeing it. I haven't heard any criticism about it. And they keep seeing this thing like, oh, well, if we get 52 senators, we can change things. No, you can't. You didn't change it in 2000 and when did Obama run? 2008? Oh, man. He was 2000. He was 2000. Yeah, 2008. 60 senators. Did anything change? You had 60. That's like a super majority. There were only 40 Republican senators. You did nothing except for bail out the banks. Oh, and give us a recovery. And I mean recovery in the slightest. Instead of one job, some people had two and three jobs, but hey, that's just me. Hindsight is always 2020. So they can lose me with this. If we get 52 um centers we can do anything you didn't do anything when you had the majority now what makes you think that i'm going to believe you when you say if you get 52 you technically need 60 to do anything and again i still question if you would do anything with 60 as a matter of fact i think and i believe if you had a hundred you still wouldn't do anything if you had a super super majority of 100 senators who were all Democrat. I don't think you could get anything done. I think you would find some excuse. I don't know what excuse you would find, but you would find one and say, oh, well, we couldn't do it because of. Um, and it's convenient for them because they can always use the fact that they don't have the filibuster as an excuse for not doing anything, but there's never any steps to take away the filibuster, which isn't even in the constitution, would you say you follow, but in my opinion, why are we following a document written by um, people who own other people against their will, but hey, that's just me being just me. So um, speaking of senators, Kirsten, Kirsten, Cinema, whatever her name is, decided to become an independent. And I think I talked about this last week, but I haven't watched last week's show. Um, why hello this is tracy and i want to let you know that the video that you just watched is just a snippet and to see the whole wonderful episode you need to be a patreon the link to be a patreon is in the description section please check it out and please support we need um as much support as possible. Remember, you can always uh, subscribe to our page and be notified when we get new videos. But if you want to see the whole video in its entirety, unedited, um, just, just off the cuff, no filters, no anything, be a Patreon. You can start as low as just $1 per month or $5 per month. Um, we'll start to have polls. Um, Sometimes I'll drop into the Patreon once we get a couple more members 
But again, I just want to encourage you to support us on the Patreon. The link is in the description and have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.